Eerie Arms House. What was the arms house, and what secrets does it hold? Let's find out, tonight on Project Algerine. In 1832, while negotiating the details for the Erie Canal extension, a stipulation in the law required that Erie County set aside 100 acres of land to erect an almshouse. The almshouse would house Erie's indigent citizens. It was often referred to as the home for the friendless or the poorhouse farm. After many years of delays and development issues, in 1841 the almshouse was finally constructed located roughly three and a half miles west of what was then the city limits. The building stood four stories tall, with a rear wing of three stories. The building was constructed of brick and had three towers, one in the center and one flanking each side. The men's and women's residences were separated on each side, and used the top three floors. The complex was massive, and designed to house 270 people. 135 males, and 135 females took up residence at the almshouse. The people who came to live at the almshouse had many different reasons that brought them there. Some were just penniless, aging, and poor, while many others had medical or psychiatric issues that may have brought them to the almshouse. All the residents' food was grown on site, grown by the residents themselves. The poorhouse farm, as it was known, was surprisingly efficient. Water was supplied to the almshouse by a pond on the northern end of the property. This pond sat directly next to the Erie Canal extension which too passed behind the property. It's this pond which may hold a true piece of Erie history to this day. Our researchers discovered that when the Erie Canal extension was abandoned in 1871, the canal lock that sat adjacent to the pond was disassembled, and by 1891 the blocks had been sunk deep into that pond. Most likely those blocks that made up the canal lock are still there today, just waiting to be recovered. Today, the pond has mostly dried up, but it's still there after all these years. But that's not the only secret, still hiding on the property. Back inside the arms house, the first floor was reserved for smoking and seating. Many card games were played by the residents. A small medical facility was set up on the third floor. Many of the residents had no next of kin. With no one to retrieve the body, they were buried around the property for several decades. The practice of burying their dead around the almshouse went on until December 2, 1920, when a 72-year-old man became the 690th person to be laid to rest here at the property surrounding the almshouse. That's a new body in the ground, about once per month, for over 70 years. Due to an aging infrastructure and the need for a larger facility, the almshouse relocated in 1920 to a newer complex in Fairview. The original arms house was left abandoned for several years before being demolished. The property was then forgotten and left vacant for 56 years. In 1976, the property was sold to a developer and slated to become an industrial park. A local newspaper journalist, covering the story, discovered an old map, with the abandoned makeshift cemetery marked on it. It was this story in the newspaper that got the authorities involved. The county would be responsible for relocating the bodies, and initially believed that they were only dealing with about 200. As the relocation efforts were underway, it was soon discovered that the number of bodies were much higher than initially thought. Some were buried under newly constructed roadways, utilities, and even nearby businesses. 
In September of 1977 a judge ruled, it would be cost prohibitive to remove the remaining 247 bodies that still laid underneath those roadways and businesses. The remains of 443 people, that were successfully recovered, were relocated to a cemetery in Fairview Township. The industrial site that sits on the original Arms House property, has been abandoned for several years, however it was recently purchased by Amazon, and is slated to become a future distribution center. You've been watching the Erie Arms House. On Project Algerine.